welcome back into Sunday Sit Down Time. With us now virtually is my good friend Lawrence Bowers, former Mizzou basketball player, also the host of the annual Camp Bowers. We'll get to the camp in just a minute, but I got to ask you, when, when can we expect your son and daughter to commit to play basketball at Mizzou? Huh. Um, well, Fiori, I got a video of her. I want to say she was two years old, and I was reading a book tour. And uh, I asked her, would she play basketball when she gets older? And she said, yeah, I'm going to shoot it. And I'm going to wear a shirt to say Mizzou. So she was two years old when she said that. So uh, Coach Robin Pinson already, you know, she joke around saying that she has a scholarship. So who knows, man? We're here. So it might just happen. How, how's the parenting going? You got a, a what is it, a three-year-old and now a one-year-old? I got a Fiori just turned four. Four years. Uh, she's the size of a seven-year-old. Height-wise, <laughs> and uh, Lyle is—he uh, just turned one. Both of them are 98, 99 percentile in height. So, I don't know, man. Forecast, <laughs> you know, for some tall kids. That's awesome. Well, well how, how's life going for you right now? Uh, I know you're still doing medical sales. Is—is is, is coaching maybe in the future? Are we still kind of focusing on the medical sales? Well, I'm—I'm I'm very, um, I'm very present. Uh, in the moment with my medical sales job. I really like the guys I work with I'm working for Johnson Johnson That's a big-time company. So I'm very appreciative and blessed to be able to you know work for that company So as far as the coaching deal, you know basketball is a huge part of who I am um, I'm actually scratching that itch um, a lot here by doing clinics and my camps of course and uh, Whenever you know I get finished with surgeries kind of early. I'll go to the gym and train kids so that's my way of uh, staying connected to the game. I know you also get to watch a lot of Mizzou basketball. So, uh, you know, obviously yesterday I didn't go uh, as, as Mizzou had planned on senior day against LSU. But, but what do you think of the Tigers th this season, getting to 15-8, and 8-8 eight, eight and eight in the SEC? Would you say that's a pretty successful regular season? Well, yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know, and, and definitely in comparison to what we've, uh, you know, had going on at inside of Mizzou Arena uh, the last few years. So it was a very great season. Uh, in my eyes, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for, you know, the guys who have put in the work because, you know, it's not easy to bounce back from losing seasons to turn around and be ranked for 11 straight weeks. So that's just a testament to the culture, the coaches, you know, and those senior guys who, you know, said, hey, you know, we're tired of this and, and we're, we're able and we're capable. And they showed that. And, you know, it felt good going to going inside Missouri Arena knowing that we uh, have a chance to win win close games and beat good teams and, you know, having a winning program. So I was very pleased, 15 and 8. You know, we struggled a little bit towards the end of the season, but, you know, you, you, you want to hit your strides in March, and March is here. So hopefully they go on a pretty good run here in uh, Nashville, and then uh, we'll see them in the NCAA tournament. Are there any similarities, you think, to this team that, than back when you were playing? Well, I mean, you know, um, I think the biggest similarity is the senior leadership. You know, they had five seniors this year. Uh, in 2011-2012 the team had Marcus and Kim English and Ricardo Ratliff, Steve Moore, Matt Presson, and myself. You know, I didn't play that year, but I would like to say I was an integral part of the team. So I think from a senior leadership standpoint, we were very com uh, comparable. I've been telling people, I wouldn't want to play Mizzou in March just because you don't know, you know, we have a lot of different teams that we can put out there on the floor, you know, and that's been evident by our struggles and our, and our victories. But when we're on, we're on. We're a pretty good team. So I wouldn't want to face Mizzou in March. How would you assess uh, the job Coach uh, Conza Martin's done now in, in year four with the program? Well, I mean, it takes a little bit of time to establish the culture. You know, Coach Martin, it was a lot of, High hopes when he first got here um, after, you know, a little bit of turmoil on campus and the program not doing so hot. You know, for him to come in that first year and make it to the NCAA tournament without, you know, star player Michael Porter Jr., uh, that was great. And then we kind of slipped down a little bit, and that's no secret. Um, I think, uh, like I said, it takes a little bit of time to establish a culture, and he's definitely done that. You know, all his players rave about him. You know, I've, I've grown a relationship with Coach Martin, and, uh, He's definitely, you know, someone who, you know, down the road, I wouldn't mind my son playing for. So very impressed with him. Uh, I think he's done a great job. You know, people give him a little bit of, you know, I, I, I read the stuff, maybe I shouldn't, but I don't think people understand how great of a coach and how great of a man we have at the helm of our program. 
Well, I, I want to switch gears over to, to Camp Bowers now. Uh, you're, you're in the phase where we're, we're getting things going, trying to get kids signed up for camp this summer. So uh, what's new with, with Camp Bowers for the summer? Yeah, we had 178 kids uh, last year and missed the pandemic, and no one had an outbreak. Nobody got sick. I think we did everything the right way. Um, so looking forward to this year, year seven, um, we added a camp, the Baby Ballers Camp, which will be May 22nd through the 23rd. That's for ages six through seven. Uh, we're welcoming five-year-olds into that camp as long as they can shoot on an eight-foot rim. So we're very excited about that camp in particular. We're also mortified because it could turn into a daycare. And then we're, we're getting right back into it with uh, the seventh annual Camp Bowers, which is split into two different sessions, ages 8 through 11 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and ages 12 through 16 from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And that's July 12th through 14th. And both camps will be held at Columbia Sports Fieldhouse. I feel like it was just a couple years ago you said it was going to be the last Camp Bowers, and now it seems that, uh, that this thing's really just getting started. Would you agree? Yeah, man. Um, so, you know, when I was saying that, man, I was going through a real rough patch in life. Uh, you know, that's when I was forced to was forced to retire unexpectedly. Um, I was trying to get into coaching, and I thought I had, you know, had my foot in the door, and, you know, God said, hey, wait a second. And, um, you know, I, I was kind of premature in saying that that would be my last year of doing camp, but it wasn't. And uh, each year since I said that, the camp has grown even more, you know, going into year seven. Like I always tell people, for my camp to continually, you know, rise and this, you know, and as far as attendance, that lets you know that you're doing something right. This is my way of giving back to the community. This is my way of scratching my own itch in basketball. And uh, I, I think it's safe to say that Camp, that Camp Bowers has become a staple in the community. And I hope that it continues to grow or at least stay stable for many, many years to come. Well, I'm sure it'll be, it'll be great, just like all the years past. Uh, Lawrence, it's great catching up with you. And uh, look forward to uh, seeing you at Camp Bowers, the seventh annual this summer. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, Andrew. M-I-Z. Z-O-U. We'll be right back after this.